let's talk about this infrastructure fight and this gang of center right Democrats who are holding it up. Representative Josh Gottheimer is leading this gang of, of right wing Democrats. They call themselves the gang the, of squares. Yeah, the gang of nerds. They call themselves the mod squad. I'm not kidding. And it's a, really an attempt to tank Joe Biden's agenda. Imagine for a second if progressives were the ones doing this, what the kind of uproar would be. But basically what it boils down to is that Gottheimer and this other group or eight other uh, centrists, they want to pass just the bipartisan infrastructure bill, the one that passed the Senate, without the Democrats only reconciliation package, the one that includes all the stuff that Democrats want to priority, prioritize uh, child care, child tax credit extension, climate provisions, the expansion of Medicare to include dental, uh, hearing and vision. And this was agreed upon by Democratic leadership in the in the pursuit of this legislation. So like it was always going to be a dual track and they were always going to be tied together. And this has been known for months and months and months. And this was a way to get progressives on board, too, because AOC and Jamal Bowman in the House, for example, Sanders in the Senate, who was instrumental in creating the framework for this legislation, like they were not going to vote for just the bipartisan reconciliation bill. And so this was a it's a mutually assured destruction situation. Now, Democratic uh, leadership and the White House, they were all on board and still are on board for this dual track strategy that they'll be passed together. Again, this was known all along. They'll pass together or not at all. And yet Josh Gottheimer of New Jersey, who represents a very wealthy suburb of the city, Tom Swazi is another person on board with this, represents a wealthy suburb of the city as well in New York, on Long Island. Their pet project is this salt deduction, which we'll get into in a second, but they're, basically making a demand that this salt deduction, which helps wealthy suburbs of the city and, and wealthy people in it, that th that needs to be addressed. And they're holding the entire reconciliation package hostage yeah, it's a tax for this cut. purpose. It's called a deduction. It's a, it's a tax cut. It's a tax cut. Right. But, you know, we've got to frame it in certain ways to protect certain people. So, um, Pelosi and Democratic leadership are actually understandably quite frustrated by this. There's a bit of a stalemate between the Gottheimer gang and uh, what and Democratic leadership, because this is what we've known for many, many months was going to be the path forward. Um, and there it's it's odd to say Pelosi's on the right side of something, but she is in this instance. The standoff continues to be going on to uh, through today because the negotiations on the budget framework for the reconciliation package went deep into the night and Gottheimer did not budge. So this is a very long prelude to show you this clip of Gottheimer on CNBC being asked about his decision to hold up this entire process for maintaining a tax benefit for rich people in blue states. What does the, the final SALT um, compromise look like for you and your, and your colleagues, Swazi, and, and the other guys that, that think it's really important to change that? Is it, is this, would you accept a higher cap? Is that what it's going to be, do you think? You know, my, my position on that is remains unchanged. We've talked about it here before. Um, full, uh, uh, full reinstatement of the state level tax deduction. There's no reason why we should be paying taxes twice. And this is a middle class issue here in, in northern New Jersey. Nope. And, if, you know, when we've talked about in Bergen County, the median property tax is over $15,000. So, you know, people's taxes went up in 2017 when they gutted salt. Now it's time to reinstate it and get people actually tax relief back here and get them tax cuts back here. Tax relief. Um, you're talking about, you know, a teacher and a firefighter who, who really no, you're get not. relief when this gets done. And, no, uh, and a third of New Jersey will benefit from it. So that's my fight on that, on the reconciliation package. And we're going to focus on it and we'll get that done too. Well, you don't, you, you all constantly say you don't like higher taxes in general uh, on anything. And that whole three and a half trillion boondoggle, you're going to be voting for, you know, taxes out the, the wazoo, Josh. And, and I just well, don't we, see how we you... haven't even, well, we haven't actually seen, well, let's look at the total impact on 
I'm going to focus on one thing, the total impact on my district. On Kelly. On uh, Kelly. Uh, and, and... Uh, I'm making sure that Kelly is okay. Yeah, um, no, there's some. So, that I, I just think you know, it's such we'll a look bad at that. We've got to look at that when the legislation's written. There's no bill yet. You what? So when the bill is written, we'll look at it. i got to draw you out. I'm so, I just I think, salt, I think salt is a is a problem. You can't be for salt, but, no, you know, you're helping the wealthy. I'm sorry. You, there are a few teachers in town. They're married to people on Wall Street for the most part. I don't think it's helping a lot in the middle <laughs> well, class. Well, I'll introduce you to a lot of folks that I'm hearing from who, who really, wow. who are real middle class right, folks jo- who need help. Oh. Josh loves coming on in faces, and, and we love having you, Josh. Thank- Oh, well, he was not expecting that kind of response. Uh, not on that channel. There, yeah, right on CNBC. That's Kelly Evans, who basically just called him on his BS there with the framing. So he says this is a middle class issue. Brookings Institute, the tax policy center, which is respected, found that 20% of U.S. households receive 90, the, the top 20%, I should say, receive 96% of the benefits from a unfeathered salt deduction. And it's really top heavy within that as well. The top 1% receive over 50% of the benefits from a full unlimited salt deduction. So like he says, I'm just going to focus on one thing in that interview. And that's pretty much accurate. This guy, along with other members of of this centrist block, are holding up the entire Biden infrastructure agenda, which, you know, it, it... not not just the hard infrastructure, right? The bipartisan bill that won't like progressives have already said and they have enough votes. They're not going to advance that unless um, unless the reconciliation bill is advanced. And then the flip side is happening with Godheimer and this entire crew like they are holding up that entire agenda for a tax cut for the wealthy. And that's how it needs to be framed. Um, and it's also, as you say, like, like it's, it, as the anchor said, it's bad messaging just for purely the Democratic Party's electoral decisions. And they're becoming a party that's catering more towards this specific uh, suburban donor class. So that's part of maybe why, you know, you have more people signing on with this approach by Gottheimer uh, than I think there should be. But it allows for I, I saw an article of Chuck Grassley going after Democrats for supporting uh, tax cuts for the rich with the salt deduction, like h- incredibly hypocritical of Grassley to claim that. But they get to claim that because this in in this instance, it's the reality. It's the reality. And I just think that um, this is on Biden, because what leverage do they really have? They're really going to sink all of this. OK, do that um, and then go try to figure out and try to win another election after doing that. I think the pressure needs like this is they need they'll need like and I, I think that you're seeing the right uh, signs from the leadership. But ultimately, this can't win because they don't have any leverage. This is just purely for corporate and suburban wealthy interests, um, generally speaking. And they're and they're yeah, right. But at the same time, like there might be some compromise reach where the there there's a, a, a raising of what's allowed or there's a compromise or they split the baby, which I think Pelosi would be primed to do. And I'm worried about that shoe dropping there obviously should be zero repeal but you know that th- this could be a way for her to throw chum to this particular crowd um even though they're obsessing over pay fors <laughs> yeah i mean i don't care about really i don't really care about pay fors as people know but um as long as um the big bill gets out that's what i care about and if these people stand in the way i think that it's just absurd right godheimer is one I have a lot of things to say about him, but maybe I'll refrain. Uh, It should hopefully an ex-Democrat at some point. Right. And we should say that the DCCC is actually for the first time uh, in my career covering this stuff is trying to hold these centrists accountable and is threatening their re-election funds if they continue to go down this path of tanking the Democratic president's agenda. Uh, On the flip side, a lot of these representatives in this caucus had leftist primary challenges that Pelosi and leadership helped actively uh, squash her and Steny Hoyer. And now look what's happening. Karma a little bit, but it's, it's not too sweet because it could really hurt the rest of us. Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really. Thank you.